Hello students, welcome to EPG Part Shala. I am Professor Ripshita Bansal from Bhagat Phool Singh Women's University, Sonipat. Today we are going to discuss the module Meaning and Process of Business Communication of the paper Business Communication. After completing this module, you will be able to understand first the concepts of communication, second the need of communication, third the importance of effective communication and fourth the process of business communication. According to Rollo May, communication leads to community that is to understanding, intimacy and mutual valuing. Communication pervades all aspects of a human life, whether it is personal or professional. It is the way through which one can have healthy and positive interactions and can build and maintain the favorable relationship. No matter how much the technology has become complex and advanced with the passage of time, moving from the use of postcard to emailing or video conferencing, the core principles of communication continue to apply. Effective communication is the skill which is ranked highest among all the skills required to achieve success in business. Communication covers all spheres of business whether it is purchase, production, marketing, finance or human resource management. Okay, so now we will see what is the origin and meaning of communication. Communication is the word which originated from Latin word communis and communique which means to make common or to share. Communication therefore is the way of exchanging the messages, ideas, information etc. via speech, signals, symbol or writing. The need of communication has been felt from the time the man exists. As time passed, communication tools and challenges were transformed as per the need of the time. As the time passes, new and improved vehicles of communication are being identified for the purpose of transmission. So now we see what are the different channels of communication that have been used from time to time. In the ancient and medieval times, pigeons, horse riders and runners were used to exchange ideas and information. In modern times, postmen, telegram etc. were used for communication. Presently, in postmodern era, Lots of channels are available for the transmission of information that is phones, fax, emails, video conferencing, social media, social websites, etc. The importance of communication can be understood from the fact that in our daily lives we communicate with our family, friends, colleagues and even strangers. While we are playing, talking, sitting, shopping in market, watching movie, performing our jobs or even while sleeping, Continuously, we are performing and delivering messages. Man is a social animal who constantly interacts with others. While interacting, he understands others and others also want to be understood. Everyone is unique and how one communicates depends upon one's individual profile, demographic characteristics, experiences with life and actual experiences etc. Hence, it becomes very necessary to understand communication and processes involved in it. Let's now have a look of some of the definitions of communication. According to Theo Heyman, communication is the process of passing information and understanding from one person to another. It is the process of imparting ideas and making oneself understood by others. In the words of Newman and Summers, communication is an exchange of facts, ideas, opinions or emotions by two or more people. As per Louis A. Helen, communication is the sum of all the things which a person does when he wants to create understanding in the mind of another. It involves a continuous process of telling, listening and understanding. So we can see that from these definitions, the main aspect of communication is passing on information from one person to another and also understanding by the receiver of what the sender said. So we can summarize the key points regarding the communication. Communication is about building relationship which involves developing understanding. Communication builds the relationship through establishing trust which develops over a period of time. Communication relates to the environment in which it occurs. The environment is constantly changing 
so the communication patterns and tools change and evolve over a period of time after basic understanding of the term communication we will now understand what is business communication the form of communication undertaken by the business firms to fulfill their needs of the business is known as business communication so we'll just check up some of the definitions of business communication according to r ludlow business communication is a process of transfer of information from one part to another and understanding between different parts and the people of the business organization it consists of various modes and media involved in communication interchanges in the words of hans goldman effective communication needs to be built around simple foundation and realization that communication is a dialogue not a monologue in fact communication is more concerned with a dual listening process through communication business organizations can communicate and interact with their employees with their prospects with their customers with their partners with their subordinates and as well as management among themselves now let's have a look at the goals of business communication the most important goals of business communication are four first is the receiver understanding unless that happens the rest of the communication process is useless second is receiver response from what the receiver understands the receiver responds to the sender third is through receiver understanding and receiver response a favorable relationship is made between the sender and the receiver and the last and the most important point is development of organizational goodwill among the society among the people among the various stakeholders of the business now we will understand the first and the most important goal of business communication that is the receiver understanding it is also the biggest challenge for achieving the receiver understanding for example mr sharma messages to mr saxena let's meet today to finalize the report on monthly operations of west delhi zone the sender and the receiver in this case might have different ideas about the location of the meeting and confusion might prevail the message must be so clear that the receiver understands the message in the same way as the sender intended it to be understood by the receiver while developing the clear message the sender must consider the following issues first receiver characteristics second message form and content third receiver feedback and fourth communication barrier receiver response is the second important goal of business communication receiver response can be positive negative or neutral the receiver can respond by words actions or both according to the situation it reveals the understanding of the receiver enabling us to know about the achievement of the first goal of the communication that is receiver understanding the message should be drafted in such a manner which encourages the receiver's response in the oral communication the sender can directly ask some questions which shows receiver's understanding or can ask whether he gets the message or not but in written communication the sender can encourage the receiver response by asking some questions or by attaching a reply envelope with the written message for example mr joseph is the chairperson of the committee he distributes a memo regarding the date time venue and agenda of the meeting to be held shortly in addition to this for getting the response of committee members mr joseph requests the people to notify the chair whether the members will attend the meeting or not this encourages receiver response third goal of business communication favorable relationship is very important it is to build the favorable relationship that can be achieved by focusing on the people involved in the process of communication the sender and the receiver must relate to each other positively personally and professionally to build a strong business relationship while communicating it is the first and foremost responsibility of the sender to create and maintain a strong favorable and healthy relationship this can be done by focusing on the receiver interest and benefits and using the positive language organizational goodwill the success of the business depends upon the goodwill of the business 
the better the goodwill of the company the more it will be successful as the investors invest in the company because of its reputation suppliers attach with the company due to its credit worthiness customers buy from the company due to its brand reputation reasonable prices and promotions and quality of product so it is the sender's responsibility to improve and maintain the goodwill of the company by ensuring that their communication reflects positively on quality of company's policy product services and personnel so we should understand now what is the importance of business communication the importance of business communication is immense for the success and growth of business communication in this sense may be considered the life blood of business organizations one by one we will discuss various points related to it the most important factor of importance of business communication is that communication is the basis of managerial function success of the managerial function depends upon the effective communication managerial functions include planning decision making staffing directing coordinating and controlling communication becomes the basis for all planning is essential for the growth of the business which requires extensive communication between the executives and the employees of the organization on the basis of the available information the decisions are taken by management in the big organizations the work is divided among the units to focus on the specialization of the employees so it is necessary to set coordination between the units for the successful working of the organization all this will be possible by the way of effective communication another importance of business communication is that it helps in building and maintaining human relations communication is the tool of building maintaining and developing of human relations through communication one can change the attitude of people motivate them and cooperate with them through effective communication the disputes between the employees or between the management and employees can be resolved developing positive business image in today's era building positive image is the biggest challenge for the organization every organization have some responsibilities towards the government employees shareholders creditors investors customers and society by establishing the effective communication system with all the parties an organization can build the positive image among all the stakeholders of the business but for positive image to sustain it has to be ensured that communication is backed by suitable actions or results two way communication is an effective method for promoting the industrial peace in every organization there exist both kinds of communication downward and upward with the help of the downward communication the management makes the employees understand the goals objectives and the expectations of the management by upward communication the management can understand the problems faced by the employees and the grievances of the employees suggestions and the reaction of the employees another reason why communication is important is because of building relationship with supplier a healthy relationship with the supplier always helps the business in maintaining the level and quality of the production through communication we provide the information to the supplier about the requirement of the raw material what kind of raw material is required what are the conditions for the acceptance of the quality of raw material through communication we also receive the information from the supplier about the prices discounts payment terms quality and specifications of the raw material and the quality available with the supplier etc through effective business communication the customers whether existing or potential are informed regarding existing product services or the new product services launched by the company new feature added by the company in existing offering importance and the quality of the offering prices and promotional offers so communication is very important for promoting the sales of goods and services another important reason why communication is important is reporting to owner shareholder shareholders are the persons who hold the shares of the company and are known as the real owners of the company as the real owners of the business they are informed about the performance and health of the business through annual business reports and other suitable communication methods now let's see the process of business communication 
as the diagram depicts that the process of business communication starts from the sender. Sender has to have an idea in his mind which he wants to communicate or transmit to the sender. That idea could be his opinion, that idea could be some advertisement about a product, that idea could be some promotional offering by the company to the uh, receivers who could be the customers. So firstly the sender has to have an idea and then the sender has to decide that how that idea will be encoded. That encoding can be done in the form of words, symbols, signs, visual, sounds, etc. So once the idea is encoded in any of the form as stated earlier, the message is transmitted to the receivers through a channel or medium of communication. That channel could be radio, television, uh, word of mouth, it could be uh, movies, it could be written material, anything. So when the receiver receives the message encoded by the center, the receiver according to his own understanding decodes the message and assigns meaning to that message. And whether the receiver has understood the message as the sender intended it to be can be seen only if the receiver acts in the manner in which the sender wanted him to act. So if the sender's message was an advertisement and the receivers after seeing that advertisements go to the shops and starts making purchases. This means that the receivers understood the message sent by the senders. And so the senders gets the feedback that receivers have understood the message. So we can say that the message process of business communication starts from the sender and although it ends at receivers but in a way we can say that it ends also on the sender through the feedback which is given to the sender by the receiver by his behavior or actions. So the first step in the process of communication is idea. Idea is the beginning of the process of communication. Every message either oral or written starts with an idea in the mind. Idea is the thought originated in the mind of the sender of communication message. Sender. The person who begins the process of communication is known as the sender and this is the second step in the process of communication. The sender uses his personal data bank from where he selects the ideas and encodes the message and finally transmit to the receiver. Mostly, the responsibility of the success of the communication and fulfillment of its objective largely depend upon the sender. While selecting a message and encoding it, the sender must keep in mind the understanding capabilities of the receiver. Language used must also be in accordance with the background of the receiver. If the message is encoded in accordance with the needs and expectations of the receiver, the level of rejection reduces to its minimum. For example, Lavanya, a consultancy let's say, wishes to communicate with the manager of human resource department of six sign standard life insurance company. The objective of the consultancy to secure its consultancy project regarding the training of its employees. The success of this communication depends upon the answer of the questions to the company such as first, why should company pay attention to his proposal? Second, why should company spend extra on the training of its personnel? So, the consultant must adopt such a good strategy which explains its perspective in the proposal in accordance with the company's specification. So the next steps in the process of communication are message and encoding the message. Message is the idea, emotion or the opinion encoded and transmitted by the sender. Or in simple words we can say that message is the idea converted into text or word or picture or symbol for the understanding of the receiver. The formation of the message is very crucial in the process of communication. A single wrong appeal can make rejection of the message. So the selection of the words and their ordering is very important. The idea must be ordered or sequenced in accordance with the need of the receiver so that its significance is immediately grasped. The time when the receiver of the message starts decoding the message, he starts listening, understanding and responding to the message carefully. So how the message has to be encoded? Encoding is the way of expressing the message. Encoding is the process in which the idea is converted into the form of message 
which is understood by the receiver. Encoding can be done in the form of words, pictures, symbols, multimedia, etc. So encoding of the idea is very crucial step in the process of communication and requires more attention of the sender. So the encoding is done by keeping in mind the goals of communication earlier stated in this module. So let's understand in detail what is the meaning of medium or channel. Another important element of communication is its medium, oblique channel. The method or the means by which the message is transferred from the sender to the receiver is known as the medium or channel of the message. The medium of the message can be oral, written, verbal or non-verbal. There is a slight difference in the medium and the channel of communication. Let's take an example. If the message is communicated via telephone, then telephone is the channel of the communication and oral message is the medium. If the message is delivered via a report, then the report is the channel of the message and written message is the medium. Before the formulation of the message, the medium of the message is decided as the rules and regulations are applicable on each and every medium of communication. Let's take another example. While using the oral medium, one can be informal with the audience, but when we are using the written medium of communication, we have to follow all principles of communication as the text written in the document becomes the record and can be filed or used as the evidence. Receiver is the person for whom the entire communication process has been started, as he is the person who receives the message encoded and transmitted by the sender. Actually, receiver is the person who decodes the sender's message. A receiver can be individual or can be a group. In his absence, the process of communication cannot be completed because he is the destination of the message. He can be a decoder, listener, reader or the viewer of the message. As the selection of idea and its encoding in accordance with the needs and understanding of the receiver is the duty of the sender, the decoding of the message in the same terms as were intended by the sender is the responsibility of the receiver. The receiver must have the following responsibilities in the process of communication. These are actively listens, views, reads the message of the sender not make any perception about the message and sender before the message has been fully decoded. Response to the message. In the previous example, as soon as the manager of the Sigma sign realizes the tangible benefits of his company can have from the proposal of the Lavania consultancy, he becomes more receptive and starts reinforcing his interest in communication. Decoding by the receiver is very important element of the whole communication process. The mental process through which the receiver extracts the meaning from the words, symbols, pictures encoded by the sender in the message is known as decoding. Decoding shares the same importance as the encoding in the process of communication. If the decoding is done perfectly, then the process of communication completes successfully because then what happens is the receiver has understood the message as the sender intended him to understand. So decoding becomes very important element of process of communication. Now feedback. Feedback is something which is given by the receiver to the sender. And this becomes the most important element of the communication. The process of communication is incomplete without feedback. Feedback is defined as the re receiver response towards the message forwarded by the sender. The feedback is the medium by which the sender comes to know whether the message is understood by the receiver or not. Feedback informs the sender that how the message is interpreted by the receiver. The effective communication is always responsive to the feedback and continually amends his or her message as per the feedback received. So students, now we'll review what we have learned in this module. Communication is considered as the lifeblood of organization. Through communication, Every kind of details, whether internal or external to the organization, is transmitted between different parties of the organization. Communication is the medium through which the details of the mission, vision, goals, objectives, operations, strategies, etc. are explained to the employees of the organization. Through communication only, the organization 
comes to acquire the information about the opportunities offered by the markets and threats to the organization, the needs and wants of the customers and expectations and demands of the society and also the rules and regulation detailed out by the government. So communication is the most demanding skill in today's era. For communication to be effective, all the steps in the process of communication should be properly managed. So we can say that the communication is necessary for the efficient and smooth and successful working of the organization.